Smith chart, Smith chart construction series on transmission line theory, lecture number 4.10. Smith chart is a graphical tool, a graphical aid. It is highly useful. It is widely used for solving different problems in transmission line theory. It is used to determine SWR for the line. It is used to find reflection quotient or line impedance over a line. It is also used to locate voltage maximum, voltage minimum over the line. It also finds applications in implementing load matching with the help of stubs. That is in implementing single stub matching, double stub matching, etc. In the present session, the focus is on theoretical background of the Smith chart, its graphical features, and the connection between line and the chart. To begin with, consider a few points regarding chart origins. It was developed in 1939 by Philip Hager Smith while working in Bell Labs. It is a polar plot within a unity circle. Smith chart is round in shape. The origin of the shape can be understood from this fact that it is within a unity circle. It describes complex RC relation, reflection quotient. Reflection quotient is complex quantity, real part, imaginary part, or magnitude angle with the normalized impedance or admittance. Impedance or admittance, they are complex quantities. The relation between RC and emittance, it is the origin of the Smith chart. Its real utility lies in converting RC to its corresponding normalized emittance. The details of the chart here are described in two parts. In the first part, reflection quotient line impedance relation. The second part attains to appearance and features of the chart. First part, notice it is purely connected with the line. Second part, it pertains to purely with the chart. Once you have a solid foundation on these two aspects, first aspect pertaining to line, second aspect pertaining to the chart, automatically the connection or the relation between line and Smith chart gets established. Let us consider a line terminated over an impedance ZL. Let us suppose this ZL is different from the characteristic impedance of the line Z0. As a result, a part of the incident wave gets reflected. The ratio of reflected wave to incident wave, it is called reflection quotient. It is complex. If we consider a point P, at this point, reflection quotient possesses certain value. Reflection quotient varies from point to point. At this point P, there exists some impedance too. That impedance is called line impedance. Inverse of line impedance is called line admittance. Here, Z. Line impedance is indicated by Z. Small Z is used because it is normalized. Normalized quantities are usually indicated by small letters. Similarly, Y. Y represents normalized line admittance. The line impedance or the line admittance at point P, these are related to complex reflection quotient at that point. That relation is given here. Z equal to 1 plus gamma by 1 minus gamma. This is normalized line impedance. Gamma is reflection quotient. Y is normalized line admittance. As already mentioned, Z, Y, gamma, all are complex quantities. Z can be denoted as R plus JX. R is normalized line resistance, X is normalized line reactance, whereas G is normalized line conductance and B is normalized line susceptance. Gamma reflection quotient can also be denoted as gamma R, real part of reflection quotient plus J, gamma I, imaginary part of reflection quotient. Now, Z equal to 1 plus gamma by 1 minus gamma. This is an equation involving complex quantities. It can be separated into two equations, each equation involving only real quantities. So, actually, it is two equations. Similarly, Y equal to 1 minus gamma by 1 plus gamma. This equation can also be separated into two equations, each equation involving only real quantities. 
So this relation is also actually two relations or two equations. Smith chart can be constructed either from the first relation that is z equal to 1 plus gamma by 1 minus gamma or from y equal to 1 minus gamma by 1 plus gamma. But these two equations give slightly different versions or variations of the Smith chart. The Smith chart that is used right now is the one that is based on the first relation z equal to 1 plus gamma by 1 minus gamma. Using the second relation also one can construct but it is almost the same with small minor differences but that chart is not in use. What we call Smith chart, that chart is based on first relation z equal to 1 plus gamma by 1 minus gamma. Now, magnitude of RC, reflection quotient is reflected wave by incident wave and reflected wave cannot be more than incident wave amplitude wise. Therefore, magnitude of RC is always less than 1 as long as the line is a passive one. Our discussion here is about passive lines. So, so magnitude of RC is always less than one. Mathematically, it can be stated like this. Magnitude of gamma less than or equal to one or it can be put in this form. Gamma R square plus gamma I square is less than or equal to one. This is an equation. It represents a circular region over a complex RC plane centered over the if we consider complex RC plane, real part, imaginary part, circular region, circle in shape, center or the origin, radius is 1. For any point within this region, of course, magnitude of reflection quotient is less than 1. It implies only RCs and impedances that are within the circular region can be valid or legal RCs and line impedances. See, if we consider a point outside the circular region, for this point, let us say for this point, what is uh, the magnitude of reflection quotient? It is more than one, but reflection quotient more than one is not, it is not a valid one. It cannot exist over the line. Reflected wave cannot be more than incident wave. It can never be more than. So therefore, a point outside the circular region is not, it is not, uh, it does it cannot represent a valid reflection quotient. In the same way, the impedance associated with the reflection quotient, as a reflection quotient itself is not valid legal, the impedance corresponding to that reflection quotient also becomes invalid or illegal. Only points that are, are only reflection quotients and impedances that are inside the circular region, they can only represent the valid reflection quotients and legal impedance values. We consider equation z equal to 1 plus gamma by 1 minus gamma. We can do some manipulation and get two equations out of this complex relation. One is r equal to 1 minus gamma r square minus gamma i square by 1 minus gamma r whole square plus gamma i square. This is one equation. Here R is resistance, normalized line resistance and X is equal to 2 gamma I by 1 minus gamma R whole square plus gamma I square. Note these two equations, they involve only real quantities. These two equations can be reformatted. After reformation, we get an equation like this gamma R minus R by 1 plus R whole square plus gamma I square which is equal to 1 by 1 plus r whole square. This is one equation. Second equation can be reformatted to get second equation. Now first equation. We can notice, we can identify this equation as circle equation. Giving different circles for various values of r lying over the complex RC plane. As R is 0 to infinity, note R is resistance, normalized line resistance. It can assume only positive values. So its range is 0 to infinity. As R is 0 to infinity, ready, it uh, is 1 to 0 and center is 0 origin to 1 over horizontal. So different circles we can obtain by giving different values to R. Next we consider second relation. The second relation also gives rise to a circle equation. So it is also a circle equation giving different circles for various values of X. What is X? It is normalized line reactance. Reactance can assume positive values 
positives as well as negative values. So its range is from minus infinity to plus infinity. This aspect we have to keep in mind. Another point is note only a part of these circles fall in the valid circular region. Earlier we come across a circular region. Then it is mentioned that the points that are within the circular region, they can only represent valid reflection quotients or valid line impedances. Outside points, they cannot denote valid or legal quotients or impedances. Here he is telling only a part of these circles. In fact, these circles, they appear like this. Only part of this part of the circle, they lie within this valid circular region. As x tends to minus infinity to plus infinity, x range is minus infinity to plus infinity, radi range is 0 to 0 through infinity with the centers falling over a vertical line located at gamma r equal to 1. Before going further, I want to mention one point. This first equation gives rise to several circles. The second equation gives rise to arcs. We are going to see Smith chart is basically a set of circles. Those circles are given by first equation. In the Smith chart, one can also find a set of arcs. Those arcs are given by the second equation. Now we can consider second equation also y equal to 1 minus gamma by 1 plus gamma. It gives again two equations, one for g, another for b. These are also formatted into two equations, both representing circles. This is first equation and this is second equation. When it comes to first equation, one can notice it is a circle equation giving different circles for various values of g lying over the complex RC plane. As g, g is line, normalized line conductance. As range of g is 0 to infinity, radi range is 1 to 0 and center is 0 to minus 1 over the horizontal line. When it comes to second equation, it is also circle equation giving different circles for various values of b. However, only part of the circles fall within valid circular region. As b, b is normalized line susceptance. Susceptance can be positive, negative, it can assume any value. However, uh, it can have any large value. So its range is minus infinity to plus infinity. If you consider this range, a radi range becomes 0 to 0 through infinity with the centers falling over vertical line at gamma r equal to minus 1. Before moving further, one point is to be told. The chart which we use usually, which is available in the market, it appears like this. Circles several circles. They start from right side. They ready keep on increasing as we move left side. And this is the Smith chart that is derived from Z gamma connection. Using the relation Y gamma connection, one can derive a Smith chart. That Smith chart appears like this. It's also round in shape. But those circles move from left to right. So it's a kind of mirror image. This shape, as already mentioned, this chart is given by Y gamma. Whereas the chart which we use in practice, it is Z gamma. Now, a few points regarding physical features of the chart. We are already equipped with theoretical background or mathematical background pertaining to impedance or admittance connection with reflection quotient. Now, physical features. We can see it is round in shape. The chart is round in shape. Over the periphery, one can find scales. Outermost, you can find a scale. It starts from leftmost point 0 0.0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, etc., etc. It is, notice there is an arrow, this arrow is showing clockwise. So this is a clockwise round scale, leftmost point is 0, 0.0 and topmost point is 0, 0.125 and rightmost point it is 0, 0.25. 
then by the time you come back to the original starting point it is 0.5 actually it is 0.5 lambda it is a scale in terms of lambda it is clockwise scale in terms of lambda inner to it below to it is another scale it also starts at the same starting point as the earlier one 0, 0.0 but you can see it is anti-clockwise it is moving in anti-clockwise 0, 0.0 0, 0.01 0, 0.02 an arrow is there it is indicating anti-clockwise by the time you are on the rightmost uh, point it is 0, 0.25 and traversing the or uh, traveling through the around the ch chart when you come to the starting point, you get 0 0.5 lambda. This is also wavelength scale. So outermost is uh, clockwise uh, scale. And the next uh, one next to it is another uh, scale, but it is anti-clockwise. Below to it is another scale. It is angle scale. But its starting point is not rightmost point. This is 0, 0 0.0. And 10 is there, 20 is there, 30 is there, 40 is there. As you move anti-clockwise. As you move clockwise, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, minus 60 is there. And if you reach um, leftmost point, it is plus or minus 180 degrees. Clockwise, one can reach the leftmost point. Anti-clockwise also, one can reach. Actually, these are angles. Angles of reflection quotient. The reflection quotient has, it's a complex quantity. Therefore, it has magnitude as well as angle. While measuring angle part of the reflection quotient, this scale is useful. Here, it is not shown in this chart. In most of the chart, there exists another scale too. That scale is also angle scale. It denotes angle of the transmission quotient. So in general, there exists four scales over the periphery of the chart. Two are wavelength scales, two are angle scales. After scales, let us move slightly into the chart. One can see, easily notice, there is a horizontal line. Leftmost point of the horizontal line, it is uh, indicated by 0. Then 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Center of the chart, you can find 1. Now, if, you, if we move further rightwards, it is 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. By the time you, we reach the rightmost point, it is infinity. Note, center of the chart is not 0. It is, it is denoted by 1. Another point is, this is not linear scale. It is non-linear. 0 0.1.2 see left half is covered with 0 to 1 right half is covered with 1 to infinity this is one aspect one can easily notice another aspect is there are circles several circles you can find they are like this one circle another circle another circle another circle another circle like this. notice all these circles they pass through rightmost point as you move leftwards, the radius of the circles keep on increasing. Also notice each circle is associated with a number. Actually, the numbers that are there over horizontal line, they are numbers pertaining to the circles. So each circle is associated with a number. That number, we can see outermost circle, it is associated with zero. Zero, actually this zero pertains to outermost circle or largest circle. Then point one, point one is associated with another circle. Point two, another circle. Point three, point four, point five, point six. As you move rightwards, radius of the circles decreasing, but values associated or connected or shown or given for those circles, they are increasing. So a circle, a set of circles are there. All these circles pass through rightmost point and there are also arcs. What are these arcs? You see here, this is an arc. This is an arc. This is an arc. Several arcs are also there. Some arcs are moving upwards like this. Some arcs are moving downwards like this. These arcs are also associated with certain numbers. Notice, if you consider the arc, this arc, 
which is looking upwards it is associated with one you can notice an arc here which is looking downwards this is it this is associated with one if you notice observe there is an arc which is right side to the arc with one it is associated with 1.2 if we move further rightwards 1.4 1.6 1.8 2 etc etc by the time you reach to the rightmost point it is it is it becomes infinity similarly if you move leftwards from one arc 0.9 0.8 0.7 by the time you reach leftmost point there you can find this arc arc turns out to be horizontal line point 2 point 1 now next is zero so actually this horizontal line represents arc associated with the value zero same is the case with the arcs that are looking or moving downwards in the lower half of the chart before moving further just let me mention these circles are called constant or circles are constant g circles the arcs are called constant reactance or constant x arcs now further description here we try to connect mathematics with the features of the chart the chart is circular region now we know why it is circular circular in shape centered over the origin of complex gamma plane horizontal and vertical axis representing the real and imaginary parts of gamma respectively inner region represents gamma less than 1 for any passive line gamma is less than or equal to 1 and this explains the unity radius and circular shape of the charts confined region this aspect already discussed and understood the complete circles they are called constant resistance circles or constant r circles in short represent normalized resistance r at various points over a lambda by 2 long lossless line they are also called constant conductance circles or constant g circles in short representing normalized conductance g at various points over a lambda by 2 long lossless line so circles are constant or circles are they can be called constant conductance circles the largest circle is at the border representing zero resistance or conductance centers of the circles lie over a horizontal straight line which actually denotes real values of r c passing through the center of the chart so this is the chart this chart is over gamma plane this is real axis this is imaginary axis this is our horizontal line so this values over this horizontal line actually they represent real part of the rc the circular arcs called arcs they are called constant reactance arcs or constant x arcs in short represent values of normalized reactance x at various points over the lambda by 2 long lossless line similarly they are also called constant susceptance arcs or constant b arcs b is the symbol for susceptance in short representing values of normalized susceptance b at various points over a lambda by 2 long lossless line they found stretching out in both sides of the horizontal line notice the arcs in the upper half the arcs move upwards they appear as if they are moving upwards in the lower half they appear as if they are moving downwards so this is shown these are circles these are arcs the horizontal straight line called pure resistance or conductance line representing zero reactance or susceptance this point i have already mentioned it divides the chart into two upper half and lower half the middle point of this line which represents zero rc is center point of the chart this point also denotes r rg equal to 1 with values less than 1 on left side up to zero and with values more than one up to infinity on the right side we have already seen the two sets of curves one set of complete circles and one set of circular arcs they form two different orthogonal families the circles and arcs are always normal to each other they are perpendicular to each other both the sets pass through the rightmost point of the chart representing as already mentioned all circles all arcs they pass through rightmost point and rightmost point is gamma r equal to 1 gamma e equal to 0 
the chart can be used either as impedance chart or as an admittance chart but always with the normalized quantities normalization is with respect to ca of the line as impedance chart the circles denote line resistance and arcs represent reactor the upper half of the chart above the horizontal line denotes positive reactance that is inductive reactance and the lower half negative reactance that is capacitive reactance as admittance chart the circles however denote line conductance and arcs represent susceptance upper half of the chart above the horizontal line denotes positive susceptance that is capacitive susceptance and lower half represents negative susceptance or inductive susceptance left half right half in the left half of the chart resistance conductance and also reactance susceptance values are less than 1 right half conductance or reactance susceptance values are always more than 1 we have already noticed the movement on the line towards generator corresponds to clockwise motion on the chart and towards load corresponds to anti clockwise motion here a point is to be told let us suppose we are here over a line at a point p arbitrary point p let us suppose we know the impedance at point p it is known to us and we want to know impedance let us say at some other point which is on the load side some point p prime let us say p prime we want using chart it is possible to find impedance at p prime while making use of the chart we have to make certain amount of movement as point p prime is load side that movement over the chart is towards load means anti clockwise we have to move anti clockwise over the chart anti clockwise means i think second scale mm -hmm. topmost scale scale is clockwise next scale we have to use similarly let us suppose there is another point p double prime let us suppose we want uh, impedance at p double prime this point is on the source side source side of the reference point so we need to move over the chart and that movement requires to be in source side means towards generator means clockwise scales two scales that are provided over the periphery which are mentioned as wavelength scales those scales we will be using for movement over the line the chart can represent the line only for one half wavelength long as the line characteristics are periodic with a periodicity of one half wavelength the chart can be made use for any length of the line movement from left to right over the chart corresponds to circles and arcs of decreasing radii but increasing resistance and conductances reactance and susceptances in the upper half clockwise movement corresponds to increase in inductive reactance capacity susceptances whereas in the lower half clockwise movement corresponds to decrease in capacity reactance or inductive susceptances the right half of horizontal line corresponds to voltage maximum right half of horizontal line this is horizontal line this is center center one right half means this part corresponds to voltage maximum current minimum impedance maximum and swr rho left half of the line corresponds to voltage minimum current maximum impedance minimum and inverse swr one by rho this part also the location of vmax corresponds to z max equal to rho on the line and that of v minimum corresponds to a point of z minimum one by rho the rc and impedances at charts leftmost point are minus 1 plus j0 and 0 plus j0 respectively at the rightmost point they are 1 plus j0 and infinity plus j infinity and at the topmost point they are 0 plus j1 and 1 plus j1 and at the bottommost point they are 0 minus j1 and minus 1 minus j1 they are shown here rightmost uh, right half of the line left half of the line rightmost point leftmost point topmost point bottommost point reflection quotients emittances their values are shown here as already mentioned four number of round scales over the charts periphery outermost one is clockwise towards generator scale next one is anti clockwise towards load these two begin left side of the chart covering entire chart in a distance of lambda by 2 inside two more starting from right side of the chart reflection quotient angle transmission quotient angle in degrees first one covers the upper half from 0 to 180 degrees anti clockwise and lower half 0 to minus 180 degrees clockwise second one this is not uh, there in the chart that is shown displayed uh, in the present session but sometimes it also this scale also exists 
in some of the or most of the charts. Second one covers upper half 0 to 90 degrees anti-clockwise and lower half 0 to minus 90 degrees clockwise. Bottom of the chart, several linear scales useful to measure SWR, RC, TC, attenuation, various losses are also usually they are uh, they exist but they are not shown in the chart that is uh, displayed uh, in the session. These are some of the things which uh, I want to share with you right now as far as Smith chart is concerned. Let us recollect the important points from the connection connecting relation between impedance and uh, reflection quotient. Two equations are derived. Both equations are circular equations. One equation is in terms of resistance. Another equation is in terms of reactance. First equation gives rise to a set of circles. Second equation gives rise to arcs that are there within the Smith chart. Different features, physical features or appearance of Smith chart or graphical aspects of Smith chart, they are explained, ultimately providing connection, ultimately establishing a relation between line and the chart. Enough for me.